Hi, this video is about indirect or secondhand uh, contact with poison ivy and that allergic rash you can get. This video is not about the science or the medicine of, of like identifying poison ivy or the compounds in it. Other than I drew this quick little picture for illustration. Uh, this can apply to poison ivy or poison sumac, poison oak. Um, there, there's an oil in the leaves, uh, it's called urushile, and that oil can get you know transferred from the leaf to your skin and it can also be transferred uh, secondhand and that's more what this video is about. So I would um, consider myself an expert in terms of identifying poison ivy. I'll give you an example. I can be driving down the road in a vehicle 40 miles an hour, look out on the side and if there's poison ivy there I can spot it. But nevertheless I still get poison ivy even though I try to avoid it. I still get poison ivy about every year in the summer. Uh, I'm outdoors a lot. And so what I'm going to do is share with you some things I've learned and some of my lessons learned uh, to hopefully, maybe you're trying to figure out how you got your poison ivy, even though you don't think you touched it, and how to avoid it in the future. All right, so I'm going to tell you a couple different ways that um, I've found to get indirect poison ivy. And each of these things I tell you is actual fact. At least one time, I've gotten poison ivy by this happening to me after, after the fact I figured it out. So you could be like outside, didn't see poison ivy, didn't touch poison ivy, or you know, you avoided it all day long. But then, you know, two, three days after you've been out, you see that rash and the itch and you know what I'm talking about. And once you start to get it, you can get it real bad or it can spread even. Um, so one thing I found is on your shoes and on your gloves, you know, you're, you're walking through leaves, you're walking through fields and you rub up against the poison ivy and the oil gets on there. And actually the, the real thing that caused me the most trouble is tying my shoes. Okay, so at the end of the day, you take your shoes off, you untie your shoes, you touch the laces, the oil's all over the laces. Um, or you're out in the field and your shoe comes untied and you tie your shoe and the next thing you know, you don't realize you're touching your eye or you're scratching your arm and, and, and it just starts to spread and you don't even know it. For about five years in a row, I got poison ivy and I couldn't explain it. And it was from basically touching my shoes and taking my shoes off. It could be at the bottom of your pants leg as well. Okay, so what I've done... Before I go on a hunting trip, simple thing, I bring a pair of latex gloves, a box of latex gloves. Every day I use a different pair of latex gloves, pack a pair of latex gloves. Before I take my shoes off, I put on my latex gloves. Now, if you're allergic to latex, you'll, you'll know that. You have to avoid that, find an alternative, a, a substitute, okay? But um, just what I mean is, you know, use these gloves whenever you're going to handle your, your clothing, especially your shoelaces. Or, or your hunting gloves, uh, you know, use the latex gloves in place and then just discard them and uh, try to keep those clothes separate. That's number one. And I guarantee you, I've gotten poison ivy at least 10 times indirectly by, uh, by tying my shoes. All right, here's another way, a lot less common, I admit it, but it happened to me once. Biking through some brush, you know, occasionally your, your leg brushes on your chain and you get uh, grease on your leg. Well, you know, the, the oil that's in the ivy, it's an oil, so like dissolves like. And that oil can get into the grease that's on your bike chain and then gets onto your leg. Uh, it's far-fetched, I admit it, but uh, it happened to me once, so I thought I'd include it. Next way you get poison ivy is firewood, specifically handling the bark. So you may not know, poison ivy is a bush, but it's also a vine. It loves to climb. And the poison ivy oil is often on the bark of the wood you buy. You handle it all day, like putting logs on a fire. Chances are, and then you know, you rub your skin or touch your eye. Chances are you're gonna get some poison ivy oil on you. True story, I was hunting in an area trying to climb a tree. And I, you know, I know I have trouble with poison ivy, so I'm looking for a tree without a poison ivy vine on it. I literally checked 20 trees. Every single tree had a poison ivy vine on it. I finally, I just decided, you know what? I chopped the vines and I said, I'll go hunt somewhere else. 
and I'll give it a year of you know the rain and the snow um, cleansing the tree and I'll come back next year and hunt this place and uh, let the poison ivy fade away so bark on trees this is real common this can happen a lot just pay attention to that and lastly the cat yes true story believe it or not grandma used to cat poison ivy every like once a week for the whole summer hope the cat cooperates and stays in the frame but couldn't figure it out finally realized she had an outdoor cat and her cat would you know go in the wild go through the weeds she'd come in and pat it and she'd get rash on her hands on her arms and uh, it could be your dog too I suppose depending on you know the conditions of where you live but yeah those the animals have oil in their skin the oil is in the poison ivy it transfers you touch it um, again true story grandma had poison ivy many many times so I hope you enjoy the video. I hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.